However big or small, our home should be a haven. There's a thousand jobs I need to do around the house. We just don't have the time. But it's not always easy keeping a house in order. It's such a shame we're not using the space. It is absolutely ran full of stuff. But help is at hand. That's a fantastic piece of furniture. Look at this! A slug! That is solid. You can take back control of your home with clever, common-sense hacks. It's perfect. I love it. That don't bust the bank balance. And the best thing, you still got all of your storage. From this to this. That is just gleaming. That'll do nicely. Oh, my <laughs> God! We'll show you how you can make life-changing improvements in just one day. It's nice and clean for Mummy! Yay! I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. <laughs> With better use and a spruce-up of your space. It's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day. This is absolutely brilliant. Are you getting me all tearing off? Our team of experts is here to help. The old tool belt's coming out. Well, That's how I know you're serious. Master builder Tommy Walsh brings over 50 years of DIY experience. Solid as a rock. Maxine Dwyer runs one of the UK's top extreme cleaning companies. That's what I mean by squeaky clean. And creative carpenter Asher Edwards prides himself on being a perfectionist. I am good. Just a little bit. Cheers. 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 <laughs> so which household has sent a distress call today? So welcome to Big Blue. This is our home. Um, there are nine of us who live here. The Big Blue is the nickname of this rented house in Bristol that's home to nine party-loving young professionals. So on a Friday evening, you will just it, people just kind of accumulate here, and it will go from being kind of three people getting back from work to suddenly having kind of twenty people down here with a kind of party atmosphere, and it is it is really cool. With so many people living under one roof, it's the shared areas that are showing the strain. It's a bit of a mess sometimes, especially because there's so many of us who live here. The communal spaces are especially get um, quite messy and dirty, and we really are in need of um, some assistance. We just can't manage <laughs> it on our own. <laughs> it is tricky it keeping is it tricky. clean because there's so many of us, and so no single person feels that they're responsible for doing the cleaning. Cleaning rotors have all failed, and one room is suffering more than most. This is our downstairs toilet and our guest bathroom, I suppose. Uh, none of us like using this space. We really struggle um, to enjoy it because it is so awful. <laughs> there's mould, there's often, like, slugs crawling around in the wall. <laughs> it stinks. Cleaning emergencies are springing up in other rooms, too. This is the kitchen. There are a lot of issues. So the hub's often very dirty. Uh, the back wall's got a lot of oil up it. Um, we often hang a lot of pans on there that are always in the way. Housework isn't the only issue. There's only one communal living room and it's crammed with furniture and clutter. This space over the years has definitely become a bit of a dumping ground for all the tenants. Also, there's a lack of storage. We've got a lot of things just thrown in there that could be stored a lot better. And it would be nice to have a bit more space, maybe to have a dance in this space. It's not the only area that needs more organisation. We are struggling with the recycling because there's so many of us that live here. It can be quite overwhelming with how much lack of storage we have. It does kind of take away from the beauty of the space. Today is the big clean and fix. With the team on their way, the housemates head out to give them free reign in their home. And show you can make a difference to your home in just one day and on a minimal budget. In this case, even when it's rented. Look, that's yeah. us, Big Blue. That, is that what it's called? Yeah, Big Blue. It isn't big and it's blue. Big house. 
There we go. Wow. Well, it's certainly messy. <laughs> oh, wow. What is going on? It's big space, but it's crammed. It's dark. Look how much well. sofas are in there. There's so wow. much furniture in there, there's no room for people. No. It's a mess. How many people are living in here? Nine. Plus friends, I guess. Yeah, I'd say there's more than nine here. Let me have a look around at Ben. Look at that. There's loads of stuff dumped behind the sofa. That's a dumping ground. <laughs> is it young people living here? Yeah, well, they're young professionals and they split their time between work and socialising. Wow. Yeah, but they're not making any time for cleaning, <laughs> organising, storage. It's just chaotic. Yeah. Do you know what? This place will look lovely once it's just organised and things are put into compartments. Organisation is one problem. Cleaning is another. Oh, dear. And it looks... Like, they haven't really worked out who's cleaning and who ain't doing it. Yeah. I'm actually sticking to the floor. Oh, God. Wow. Should okay. we go and have a look into the bathroom? That Something must like... be it there. Ooh. Go on, Maxine. Oh, no, no, I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. It's a wet room. Yes! The floor is sloped and the drain is on the higher bit of the floor. If a wet room's draining point is higher than the floor, the water won't drain away, leaving water damage and lime scale behind. So there must be a puddle here 24-7. Yeah. Hence why the grating's so dirty. Look at the toilet seat. Oh, my oh. gosh. <laughs> there's no seat. There's no, you've got the no seat lid. bit, but there's no lid. And uh, it's a rather unusual colour. Oh, my God. Do you know how much bleach? And acid <laughs> will make a difference in here. <laughs> look at this. Oh, look, yes. Look at a friend. A slug. slug. Oh, a slug. Lord. <laughs> slug. Let's have a look outside in the garden. Oh. There might be something positive in this house. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's a nice big garden. Nice little patio. Yeah, good space, actually. It's a social house, and this would be the perfect spot out here. Yeah, yeah. We can see what they do when they're not actually uh, working. Yeah. So, yeah. This is all a bit messy, though, so it needs tidying up. It needs a little bit of creativity. Yes. And this terrace, this could do with a clean-up as well. Yeah. All right, well, I think we know what we're going to do. With their three problem areas identified, the team have their missions for the day. Maxine will declutter, clean and organise the lounge, ready for Asher to build a smart storage solution to help keep them organised so they can start to enjoy their communal space better. Tommy will reorganise and clean up the outside patio space so the al fresco socialising can continue and not be hampered by unsightly overflowing rubbish. And Maxine will do battle with the slug-infested wet room and tackle the messy cooking area. All this in one day and on a minimal budget. They better get cracking. We need to sort something out in this area. So what have you got planned for here? Well, first things first, we need to get all this mess out. I can't even think straight. There are four and a half million rented properties in England. If you're renting one of them and want to carry out any decorating or DIY jobs, you must check your tenancy agreement in case you need the landlord's permission first. When you want to move furniture around, especially large pieces of furniture, point number one, you must have two people doing it. You need help, at least two people. Quite often, a useful tip is to put a piece of cardboard under the bottom and use it as what we call a dolly. So you pull the cardboard and it slides the actual piece of furniture along the floor without damaging the floor or the sofa. Asha, can you give us a hand with this? We could take it out in the garden. We just slide it on this floor because it's soft. Ready? The housemates have agreed to ditch the sofa as it's old and beyond repair. Most local councils will collect large pieces of furniture for a small fee. There you go. That's it. With more space to work, Asha can finally come up with a solution for the housemates' problems in this space. Yeah, I think we've always struggled trying to figure out a good layout for that room. Yeah. Uh, just like the shape of it, we kind of want sofas so you can, it's kind of social. Uh, we want to like have space for the deck so you can access easily. So then we're always kind of like playing around with different ideas, but never quite got someone that's worked out and stuff, I don't think. 
Now I can actually see the floor. I can start to vision what we need to do here. And storage is their main issue. Yes, definitely. Storage and seating. Yes. I reckon I'm going to work on this side of the room. The bottom of these alcoves might be able to do a little something. Mm. I can't see what you could do. <laughs> I've no Leave idea how. Leave it to me, how. Maxine. Leave it to me. I've seen the problem and I know the solution. Very good. See you later. I'm just going to measure up. So I want to create some storage, usable storage, that they can pull out and then sit on as well. It's going to be a pretty straightforward design, having two doors on the front and perhaps a nice piece of foam on top of the unit so they can sit on. And then when there's lots of people around, they can slide it out, sit on it. When they're done entertaining or the, everyone goes home, they can slide it back in and chuck all their bits and pieces back inside the storage. With two alcoves, Asher can create a significant amount of storage and seating without using limited floor space. So it's a multi-functional storage and seating. Best of both worlds. Now here we have the recycling area for this house. Predictably, lots of uh, pizza boxes, lots of empty cans and bottles. They're a very social group of people. This is good that they're recycling stuff, but it's messy. So what I think we should do is maybe make a new rack system there and then stack all these boxes in the system and that would tidy this all up and stop it all becoming a mess. Tommy has spotted some materials he can use to build his new recycling unit. Yep. That's good enough to use. The thing about pallets is you can find them all over the place and they don't cost any money. And it's good if you can upcycle them because it's a shame to waste the material. And they could have quite a useful life as something else. Even though it's not treated, it'll have a, a life, probably no more than 10 years, but uh, 10 years for free. And of course, you're helping the environment. Time for Maxine to start on her first task of the day, the unloved bathroom. So we've actually only got two communal bathrooms in the whole house. One down at the bottom, we then one up at the top. And in the mornings before work, it's a race to get to the top. It's the last thing you want to see when you wake up in the morning before work is to go in that sluggy, damp, <laughs> wet room that is just, like, horrific. It's so bad, Maxine needs large amounts of bleach to tackle it. The bathroom is really quite manky, so I'm going to have to goggle up boot up and suit up. <laughs> I definitely, I can't do without the goggles. I honestly can't. You know, we're using very heavy duty materials. <laughs> this has to be worn without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, I have a teeny bit of doubt that it will come up to tip top condition because it's old. You can't make old new, but you can clean old. That, that's my biggest, biggest fear. Oh, I'm doing... Maxine's disposable coverall and goggles will protect her clothes, skin and eyes from any bleach splashes, especially as she's also working overhead. If raw bleach isn't washed from your skin quickly, it will cause a burn. Maxine! <laughs> she's going to war. Yes! <laughs> 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 Oh, Any last words before you go in? Oh, yeah, can I borrow your screwdriver? <laughs> no, no, because I know what you're doing with it. <laughs> it's not going down another toilet. <laughs> wow. Look at there. Total scum, mould, you name it. But it can come up. Do you know what? I think I'll do the tiles first and then start on the wash basin as the bleach is working on the tiles. So, I have a plan. Keeping a window open while she works today will help limit the buildup of chemical fumes. Bathroom ventilation is also important in reducing condensation and can reduce mould and mildew. What I'm going to do is smear the walls with bleach, but before that, I'm going to soak the cotton wool in some bleach so that I can give the corners and edges a bit of a head start. And that can start working because I think the hardest part are the corners and the edges right at the bottom. And I'm going to leave it there as long as I can. Also, 
the bleach from the top and the uh, all along the tiles will drip down onto this as well, so it will get more bleach as well. So that will be an added plus. All right, here we go. Bleach is a disinfectant, so it's great at killing germs in your bathroom. So I've done the prepping. I've put the cotton wool along the bottom, and now I'm going to start smearing the bleach all along. Make sure it gets into the grouting. Grout is porous and absorbs dirt and moisture, making it a breeding ground for bacteria in steamy bathrooms. You've really got to get it into these corners here. Let it drip down and then follow it down with your hand. Can you see it dripping? And then it'll drip down to the cotton wool. If you'd prefer not to use bleach, you can clean grout with baking powder. Make a paste with water and vinegar and scrub it over the grout with a toothbrush before rinsing. Its abrasive property will help lift the dirt. This side is really bad. Tommy, meanwhile, is washing the mucky patio area where his recycling unit will eventually sit. This is a power washer, especially for patios and decking. And this is the tool we use for actually washing the paving down. An electric pressure washer can be hired for as little as £25. How this actually operates, it's a bit like a hovercraft. With this thing just gliding over the top and spinning out the water, then it lifts all the dirt, but it keeps the pointing, the cement in between the slabs, keeps that intact. That's the real handy thing about this. Pressure washers have a bar rating, which tells you how strong the water will hit its target. 120 bars is strong enough for cleaning fencing, patios and dirty cars. Because it's so exceptionally dirty, I've decided to use the, the power wash lance just to give it a bit of a rinse off. Now that all the washing's actually been done. That's it. Half an hour, and it's a pretty significant change. Outside, Ash has started cutting out plywood panels to make his two storage seating units. I don't have a lot of plywood spare, so each cut counts. It's important that all my pieces are nice and square. So I'm using this guide rail square. It helps make sure all my cuts are nice and straight. Plywood is made from different layers of veneered wood, sandwiched together, making it light but very strong. OK, so these bench units need to be strong enough for two people to sit on. So I've, I'm constructing them in a way that the weight will transfer from the top straight through. I'm using 18 mil ply. This is nice, nice, strong, sturdy material. Once this is all screwed and glued together, it will create a nice, solid base. Hopefully the guys will like it and it will be the right solution for them to keep all their, all their clutter away. OK, so... All right, Asha. Maxine! How's it going? Fantastic. What are you making? So I'm going to make a bench unit that can sit in the alcoves. I think they can sit on it and they can put things inside. Well uh, done, my dear. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank Ooh. you. <laughs> She looks mad in those overalls, I'm telling you. Oh, God. I'm taking a break. It's quite... It's necessary because it's quite fumey in there. Lots of fumes. The bleach is just... Oh, it just gets in your nostrils and in your throat. So I have to have a drink and take some fresh air. And I've come up to also get some chemicals ready for the wash basin and the toilet. Maxine's going to use strong lime scale remover containing hydrochloric acid found in many household cleaning products. But of course, we have to wash away the bleach first because to use two chemicals is it's potent. You have to use a stiff scourer and then just go in between. Because look at this. 
That's, that's not doing nothing. It's a good workout. <laughs> Outside, Tommy needs to clear space to house his new recycling unit. We're going to go down to the bottom of the garden. It will have more storage than the old table, avoiding the overflow of rubbish encroaching on the patio picnic table, making the space far more sociable. We use the patio area a lot. If there was anything that could be done to allow us to utilise that space more, that would be really good. When you're working with any salvage stuff, you have to acquire the material first and then design what you're going to build with what you've got. 32. Well, I'm just measuring up these recycling boxes and we're going to do a framework. It's like a, a rack and that's going to take two rows of these boxes but with a shelf in between and it'll all be screwed together and that'll stabilise it. Recycling boxes come in different sizes across the UK, so measure yours before you build anything to store them away. When you're salvaging, you know, timber, you've got to try and get it so it's easy to clean up. It's not too distorted. If it's been outside, that's nice and straight, considering it's been out in the garden for some time. And it's pressure treated as well. That means they impregnate it with a moisture resistant product. So the timber lasts twice as long, if, especially if you're going to use it outside. Over time, pressure treated wood can develop a green tinge because of the chemicals used to preserve it. You can use untreated wood for outdoor projects, but it will need to be oiled, sealed or painted first to prolong its life. Inside, Maxine's bleached bathroom tiles Lovely. are ready for a shower. Whoa, look at this glitzy, glitz and glamour. <laughs> look at that. Do you know, it's important to rinse off the bleach because I'm, I'm going to be using another chemical and if you mix two chemicals up, you could have a terrible reaction. Right, it's time for me to check and see if the bleach has done its job. Right, what I'm seeing here is grime. It's grime from the corners and it, so you can clearly see that it's worked. It's done what it's supposed to do. Absolutely brilliant. With the walls and ceiling in hand, it's time to treat the worst affected area. All the dirt from outside comes onto this floor. So this, and also water settles on it. So these are to be tackled in a different way. Part of the shower room floor is lower than the drain, so excess water is evaporating on the floor tiles and leaving behind a crusted layer of lime scale. We put acid on the floor and that will lift the lime scale. But of course, remember, you have to rinse off the bleach first because we don't want a reaction that is not very nice. Even though hydrochloric acid in household cleaning products is diluted, it's still strong enough to tackle thicker lime and calcium deposits. Especially in the front of the toilet where people tend to have their feet and drips might drop here, it just gets rid of it. Hydrochloric acid is a last resort for badly stained or limestone scaled porcelain tiles. Don't use it on marble or limestone as the acid will cause discoloration. Instead, use a cleaning product specifically designed for the material. Wow! Hey! It's like a new bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You've done that. Even the floors come out. Yes, oh, really yeah, good. yeah, 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 yeah. You were right in what you said. I didn't think you was going to pull this one out of the bag, but yeah, no, it's... they'll be over the moon when they see it. I think they will. This will be their favourite. Yeah. Well done, mate. Bye. It's the end of a busy morning, and the team have earned a cup of tea and a five-minute break. Everything stops for tea. Oh, you've got your knee pads on and all. I have, yes. And your wellies. Yes. I'm in a wet room, so I have to. There's water coming from up above and down below. She's been in a war all day in that bathroom. Wow. I thought that bathroom was unredeemable. You wanted to rip it out, didn't you? Well, that's, that's what I would have out. ripped it all out, yeah. <laughs> 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 it? It's a lot cheaper and easier to do it, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. To rip it all out. Absolutely. Looking at what we've done so far and what we've left to do, yeah. 
this is probably going to be one of our biggest challenges. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we've really got to crack on, because we've got a load to do still. Yeah. True. I'm going to bring me tea with me. All right. All right. See you later. See you. All right. Bye, you guys. With the housemates returning in a few hours, Asher needs to finish his seating storage unit and paint the lounge walls. Just need to mark out for hinge plates, attach those, then we are good to go. Maxine's still got the lounge carpet and cooking areas ahead of her. Wow, off with your boots, knee pads. Oh, oh that's so much better. And Tommy has only just started work on his recycling unit, and he's even more up against it than usual. I bet you're saying, why is he cutting it by hand with a handsaw when he's got this great big chop saw here? Well, you see, it's just one of those days. Driving down here must have moved, and this screw here, which works out the depth of the blade so you can mortise and lap cut with it, that's bent so I can't move it. So, therefore, I'm having to cut all this by hand. All I've done is a very common sort of lap joint. They go like that together, a bit of glue and two screws in it, and that is a real strong joint. You could do it like that, but then it's the weight and the strength is depending purely on the screws, whereas with that, the strength and everything is in the joint, and the screws and the glue is just keeping it together. Tommy's using lap joints to construct three squares which will form the recycling unit's sturdy skeleton. He'll also add a middle shelf across the squares to allow two tiers of recycling boxes to be stored underneath. We're running out of time, so we've got to be quick, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we should get this completed in time. At the front of the house, however, Asher's a happy man. Love soft clothes hinges, you know. There's something about it that just gets me so emotional. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Just... Soft closed hinges have an inbuilt hydraulic system which eases the door closure in a gliding motion, but they're special in another way. Normally, hinges would stop around here and then you're restricted, but these hinges allow the door to open up to an angle that you've never seen before easier for chucking all the bits and bobs inside. Practicality isn't the only thing on Asher's mind. So is comfort. You don't really want to be sitting on a, a plank of wood all day, so here's a little cushion for the tushion. And then I've got this nice piece of fabric that I'm going to wrap the foam with so it all ties in and look good in these alcoves. <laughs> Maxine's getting the living room tip-top for Asher's unit. Having tackled thousands of carpets over the years, she has a tried and tested method. When you're hoovering, you plug it in at the back and work back towards the socket. Because if you plug it in here, the flex is a trip hazard. So you go from the top and work backwards. Always clean and dust a room before you vacuum so you pick up any debris that's fallen to the floor. OK, right, now... Right, now we have the carpet cleaner. Small domestic carpet cleaners could be hired for around £20 a day, with additional charges for the cleaning solution. When you've got really tough stains, your best bet is to pre-treat. So spray it with a chemical that will target the problem areas. A heavy stained bleach treatment helps to break the bonds of embedded dirt and grease. Leave it for about five minutes or so. Go and do another area that's not too bad and then come back to the, the treated area. Vacuuming frequently and carpet cleaning once or twice a year will extend the life of the carpet so it's a worthwhile investment. With the lounge carpet now clean, Asher wants to freshen up the room with a lick of paint. With walls as well used and marked as these ones, it pays to prep properly. These dust sheets are really good because there's it's got a plastic backing. So if the worst was to happen and you was to drop any paint, it won't seep through onto the lovely carpet that we're trying to protect. So you want to spread it out. If your wall has any grease or wax crayon on it, your paint won't adhere to the surface. 
Giving it a wash with inexpensive sugar soap should get rid of the marks before you start. Now, preparing the walls. You want to take out any screws, any obstacles in the way. So you want to take everything out, scrape off any bits that are in the way. So you can see there's a screw here we want to take out and the screw here. After removing nails and screws, you can fill any holes or small cracks with ready-mixed wall filler. And you want to take a scraper blade, filling blade, you don't want to lay it on too thick. Now, after that's dry, take a bit of sandpaper, rub it down. Rinse and repeat all of that, taking out screws, scraping it all back, filling cracks, you're ready to paint. As the housemates have nicknamed their home Big Blue, Ash is continuing that theme, choosing a light shade to brighten the space. Now you're ready for some roller action. While the paint dries, Asher can complete his seated storage units. It's about to screw these last hinges on and then take it all down. We'll put it just in front. We've still got to do the MDF base. Nice. And that's going to go in under there. Slide right in there. Lovely. It's like a mini bed you could lay out. Well, not you, not with your legs. <laughs> A normal-sized person could lay on it. What are you trying to say? I'm very <laughs> normal, actually. <laughs> With the afternoon racing away from her, Maxine's final task is a challenge. So, what I've done is I've decided to tackle the splashback. Full of grease. Grease, and it's also wood painted on. So it's an absolute nightmare to clean without the paint coming off as well. So, I'm using a... Heavy duty degreaser. This is industrial strength, but it is necessary because this is quite greasy. Industrial strength degreasers, which can be safely used in the home, can be bought from high street hardware stores. I just kind of work in circles because it's quite thick and hard to get off. <laughs> Whoops! Has that gone? Magic! <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the young professionals love cooking. However, they love cooking but not cleaning. But I think they should clean it off once they're done. One of the ways to avoid scrubbing is to have galvanised splashback from top to bottom. And then you can just wipe it as you go along. Yeah? Cook and wipe. That's it. Though there's room for improvement in the cooking area, the housemates are admirable recyclers. Having had to sew everything by hand, Tommy finally starts to assemble his recycling unit. These gaps here are for ventilation. Outside, you try and keep wood so the air can circulate right round it and it makes the thing last twice as long. Next step is I'm going to put timber across each one of these legs and that's going to um, take a shelf right the way through and that means they've got two layers of recycling. Just see if it's square. Spot on. Asher, we drop this down on her face. Nice and gentle. Weigh something now. Yeah. And then the last bit of the puzzle will be to fix the salvage pallet boards to the sides and to the back. And the one final thing is we put an angled piece of timber across the back. This is called a sway brace. And the idea is it goes from bottom corner to the top corner, fixed to everything, and it stops it moving like that. It makes the whole structure so much more stable. There's just enough time to finish the cushions on Asher's storage seats. Just loaded up the staple gun. Beautiful. So I'm about to wrap this foam. I'll staple one side first. Look at that. Like a pro. I am happy with that. Everyone's going to be arriving back soon, so... As much as I want to get these corners perfect, Time is against me. 
So I'm going to get them as best as I can. The day's almost over. Wonderful, look at this. Clean. This, just like that. Oh, I'm happy with that. It's the final push. There you go. It looks like a, a butcher's workbench, really. This will be so different to be out of store. All that recycling gear here, out of the way. What more can I ask for? There's just time for some last-minute adjustments. Absolutely wonderful. Look at this. And a few finishing touches. And they're done. So with a limited budget and just one day, what have the team managed to pull off? The housemate's mouldy, slug-infested shower room was crying out for a deep clean. They wanted a seating solution for their cramped living room. The space decluttered and given a thorough freshen. And their overflowing recycling area was spilling onto their social patio space. Maxine and Asher depart. It's been a tough battle, but we won the war. That's yes. all that matters. Leaving Tommy behind to show the housemates what they've achieved. Ah, That's so sweet. From the Clean It Fix It team. <laughs> Come on, guys, out you go. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we moved everything out and then we power washed both patios, so these are really wow. clean, ultra clean. I'm just properly noticing the ground, yeah. it does look amazing. It's amazing. It's like difference. Such yeah. A good job. The a space has opened up so much. It's actually though. massive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I didn't realise it was so big. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. And then we built this purpose built for your recycling. Amazing, it looks <laughs> great. When the team arrived this morning, the busy recycling area was a disorganised mess. Often unsorted, the overflow had spread across the patio, making it unusable, but not any longer. Tommy's two-tier recycling unit means every recycling box is stored away, leaving more space to use the table. Who was it again who's responsible for all the recycling? This guy over Stefan. here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually bigger than what you had before, but it's more functional. I am very pleased. <laughs> it's, so awesome. it's amazing. It's Thank really you so amazing. much. Right now, what I want to do is take you to have a look at your next surprise. Okay. okay. Are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. They love the patio. Will they feel the same about the wet room? Thank you. Oh my God! Oh, <laughs> That's oh, insane. No. What the hell? <laughs> you guys are. This is oh, great. You guys have done an amazing how? job. I, just don't, I don't get it. Possible. The walls that I can't deal with. I don't yeah. know how they did that. Earlier, the mucky shower room seemed beyond help. It was so bad, the housemates tried to avoid using it. But Maxine's deep clean has transformed it. And a few finishing touches means it's both usable and welcoming. Thank God. you so much. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm <laughs> glad you like it. It's so yeah, good. It's so good. <laughs> Maxine worked so, so hard on it today. I didn't think it was a redeemable position, but what the hell? she oh. was sure that she was going to do it. She persisted, and look what you've got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> and Maxine didn't stop there. That's amazing. This was a bit of a mistake before, wasn't it? it? Was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could, the cupboards look so great. Well, it's just been thoroughly cleaned. Everything, yeah. splashbacks, all fun. the yeah. cooker, the oven. Now I want to show you the main event, the big surprise. So come this way. <laughs> <laughs> so on the count of three. One, two, three. 
<laughs> this morning, the cramped lounge was a dumping ground of furniture, leaving the party-loving housemates no space to socialise, and a lack of storage meant clutter gathered everywhere. But not any longer. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> Wait! Huge! And these storage units, which also double as seats. Amazing! Whoa. Oh right. my God! That's so good. Asher's two dual-purpose storage units provide extra storage for the housemates and extra seating for their guests. Along with Maxine's carpet clean and a lick of paint, the room is now clean, clutter-free and an inviting space for a gathering. And the reason Asher designed and built them like this was because we know that you're social animals and you want some more seating, so you can always just pull them out and you've got more seating for everyone, you know? It's really good, uh, so yeah. And Ash has left them one more little surprise. I want to show you something. Else. Oh, <laughs> no. Stop it. <laughs> Stefan! Oh, <my laughs> God. I know this house is called Big Blue, so we've done a lovely colour blue to match on that chimney breast. Mm. It's amazing. So it matches wow. the colour perfectly. Yeah. It really does. We wanted it to be subtle as well, not something that just jumps out yeah. of you. No, it's awesome. Well, Aww. I think now that you should go out there and try a glass of that chilled, bubbly stuff. And I'm going to leave you and let you enjoy your new space. Thanks, Guys, I'll see you later. Have a nice time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. much. You know, it's really great getting this feeling of satisfaction, knowing that You've done some work and people are really, really pleased with the outcome. I mean, all these youngsters, they needed a bit of a leg up, really, just to get them going in the right direction. And I think we've more than achieved there. So, we can safely say that Clean It and Fix It has done it yet again. The housemates love their spruced up pad and have been given a head start to a cleaner and tidier home. A few weeks later, are they still enjoying their new spaces? So as you can see with the recycling unit, it's been incredible for us. It's kept everything organised and in place, and it's also allowed us to just have more space to enjoy the patio itself. So this is the wet room. No one is actually afraid to use the space anymore. Everyone's been keeping on top of the cleaning. It's just been really wonderful for us. This is the lounge. We've managed to use these storage units really well, especially the benches. Uh, we now know where everything is, and it's just the space itself is just way more open. We're able to push the sofas back and have more of a dance floor and a space for us to have a boogie in. It's just been really amazing. Mm -hmm.